if I start the recording. And it'll be archived at uh, ddi.wayne.edu backslash mddc. Today's webinar, all the microphones will be muted for most of the presentation. Um, please feel free to use the chat and the Q&A to ask questions in writing during the presentation. Uh, today, the only videos that you'll see will be those of the presenters. And um, in addition to asking questions in the Q&A and chat, if you click on the, if you're connected by Zoom and you click on the, hand, the participant button, there's a hand raise function. And if you hit the hand, it'll raise your hand and your proverbial hand rather, and we'll be able to unmute your mic and call on you to ask a question. Typically, we always have closed captioning. Um, it is not set up as yet. So as soon as we get the closed captioning capability, we will make sure to enable that for everyone today, for those of you that need it. If you're joining us live on Facebook and you have a question or comment that you wanna make, please um, just make a comment in the comment box and we'll have it read um, over the over into the live um, into the live webinar. So without further ado, I'm going to ask Jen to introduce herself and she will we'll get started. Hey everyone, I'm Jen Mullins. I'm going to share my screen and share my PowerPoint. And as she is doing that, um, our captioner is with us. And so if you want to avail yourself of the closed captioning, you just Click on the right arrow, the arrow to the right of closed captioning, and select show subtitles. All right. Um, so like Tedra said, I'm Jen Mullins, and I'm from Michigan Disability Rights Coalition. Um, for the past couple of years, I've been able to do some social media training around the state with people. And I really like love social media. I'm a social media user and I manage the social media for my organization. So I just wanted to say that I'm excited to be here with you today to talk about Facebook. And on the screen are two images. Um, one is of a person holding a coffee mug wearing headphones and looking into a computer screen. And then the other is of another person holding another coffee mug and smiling into another computer screen. I think they are connecting over a video message. So before we get too deep in, I just wanted to go over a couple of things and say that questions are very welcome throughout our time today. So please type them in the chat as they come up. Or um, if, if you need to, we can do some unmuting at times too like Tedra had said. Uh, we'll be asking questions throughout the presentation today, so watch for a picture of an owl, and that will be like your visual uh, cue that a question is coming. On the screen is a light bulb with a little thought bubble around it, and then a picture of an owl with some very bright orange eyes. Um, also, this presentation has a lot of links in it, so we're gonna post the link to our links list in the chat a few times during the presentation. So um, you can use that links list to find out more information about what we talk about today so that you're not hunting for it. Right. So our plan for today, Tedra had mentioned, I'm just gonna go over it a little bit more. Um, we are gonna be using Facebook. We're gonna talk about using Facebook for advocacy and connecting with legislators, um, accessing and creating Facebook groups, safety features, including how to deal with trolls and online bullies, uh, learning more about where your news is coming from on Facebook. Okay, that is our plan. So, up oh, on the screen, you, you might see that we have a little owl peeking up from behind a tree. So that's our visual cue that we have a question. So my question is, 
what do you like to use Facebook for? So if you could write it in the chat about what you like to use Facebook for um, and let us know, we'll read that in just a sec. Um, or if you don't use Facebook and you are curious about using it or you want to use it, you know, let us know why. Um, I really like to use Facebook to tune into news. Um, I know it's hard to know what news sources to trust on social media. Uh, and we will talk more about that later on in the presentation. Um, but I feel like it's a really helpful way for me to find out what's going on in the moment and to learn more about things. So do we have any responses in the chat from folks on how they use Facebook, um, Tedra or Tracy? Not as yet. Okay. If I could ask maybe Tedra or Tracy, you know, how do you like to use Facebook if you use it? Oh, Jen, we do have some questions, some responses okay. for messaging friends and looking at their videos and pictures to catch up with family and friends and to stay connected to friends. I like to use Facebook for several things, groups, family, friends, and all kinds of information. Awesome. Oh, thank you everybody for the answers. That's really Someone helpful. Someone else said, um, they're, they're, they're coming in, Jen. Oh, good. Facebook for both personal and business. For business, we share success stories for our individuals served. For personal, staying connected with family and friends. Definitely. Oh, yeah. And it's very, very uh, dual purpose. It can be personal. It can be professional. It can be a little mix of both. All right. Wonderful. Um, thank you for the responses. Uh, it's such a powerful tool, Facebook is. And I think in the you know, past couple of years, it's really grown with different capabilities. Um, Facebook Messenger, we're not going to talk too much about it today, but it's really interesting. Um, it's also a video messenger. So you can do video calls with people on Facebook Messenger um, and it might be easier for you to use than Zoom um, because you're already using Facebook and it's already built into the platform. Like some people said, they use Messenger. So Facebook, I think to me, really means connection. I mean, at its best because sometimes Facebook can be hard. It can be hard to look at all the information that's going on in the world. Um, you know, if you are being bullied or trolled online, it can be not a safe space for you. So on the best day, Facebook to me means connection. And there's an image of a group of people um, giving peace sign and posing together. It's kind of a graphic and they're all wearing different uh, colored shirts and have different hairstyles. And um, That's a little visual picture for the slide. So like some people said, connecting with friends and family during the pandemic, when you can't really see people or you see people at a distance, being able to connect with them on Facebook and kind of check in and see what's going on with their life can be like really, really important. One of my coworkers will post, you know, really, really sweet videos of her young children just going about their daily lives. Um, but it just makes me feel more connected to be able to see them and hear them and see what they're doing. And I'm thankful that it exists. Um, you can also meet new people on Facebook. You can find support, um, learn new information, share your opinion, and more. So we are going to jump into Facebook and advocacy. And on the screen in front of us is a person who is wearing a head covering or a headscarf, and they are typing on a laptop while they have a cup of coffee in front of them. So, um, I think many of us know that we can share our opinions on Facebook by creating a post. We can share whatever we want with the world very, very easily, I think. Um, you can type it, you can speak into your device and it can write it for you, and then you just have to make it post. I wanted to talk today about how we can use Facebook to tune in, to learn, and connect what's going on with our world. Um, I think if you are, if you're talking all the time and not listening, you may miss connecting with people. And I think it's important to kind of go back to that. So to start us off, we're gonna talk about listening, reading and learning. Um, there's a lot of information about the Black Lives Matter movement out there on the internet. 
The hashtag Black Lives Matter hashtag started as a reaction to the murder of Black people by law enforcement in the United States in much higher numbers than white people. It is a movement for um, equality against racism, period. Um, maybe you want to learn more about it. Maybe you have heard from, you know, only your family members and you don't really understand what it is or, you know, you've only heard one side of the story. Um, you can go straight to the source. There are Black Lives Matter chapters all around the country and many organize and share information on their Facebook page for their chapter. So you can use the local Michigan chapter um, page to learn more about updates and information in Michigan and beyond. And I just wanted to show you that. Bear with me. I think I have to open a web browser, stop sharing my screen, and then reshare. So, so this is the Black Lives Matter Michigan Facebook page. And it should also be in your links list. So if somebody could do me a favor and post that link to the links list in the chat, that would be really helpful. Um, so while the page loads, I know, I'm sorry, Facebook has been pretty slow for me uh, in, the, in the day. I think they're having some updates on their end. But you can go through and you can learn. I like to go over here on the left-hand side of the page and click about if I don't know very much about a page because usually when Facebook is working, um, it gives me more information to check out. Black Lives Matter Michigan is a statewide network of Black-led organization building power and love for Black lives. And there's even a website so that if I want to learn more, I can find out even more information. So these are the organizers of the movement. And I really think that um, listening to them versus kind of hearing it through other people can be very helpful if you're trying to find out real and accurate information. So I'm just scrolling through the website right now and kind of looking at a couple of different things. Um, and because this is the Michigan one, uh, they are focused on things that impact Michigan. So right here we are talking about the Flint water crisis that is still, still a crisis right now. Uh, different chapters. So even beyond the state, depending on where you live in the state, um, not not so much in the UP and northern Michigan. I'm sorry, but uh, you know, eastern Michigan, south southeastern Michigan, western Michigan. There's more. Um, so I just wanted to share that. Um, oops. I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. Thanks for being patient with me as I get all this worked out. It's um, a challenge switching from screen to screen. Okay, so some of us have also heard of hashtags. Um, hashtags are a way of organizing posts around a specific topic. Um, the hashtag CRIP the vote, so C-R-I-P the vote, is typically used for information about people with disabilities and voting. Um, I, we're going to click on this in just a second. I did want to say when you search hashtags, it's really important to look at the date of when things were posted um, because the way that Facebook does searches, it may show you the most popular post versus the most recent post. So the most popular posts might be from 10 years ago and the information that you're looking at might not be accurate. So it's helpful to kind of look at the date. Um, when you search a hashtag about a topic, you're interested in. So for example, maybe the California, California wildfires, maybe you want to know about, more about that. You may find new people or pages that you want to follow too. And if you're not sure which hashtags to use, start with something more simple like hashtag disability and see what other hashtag pops up in your search. Um, you can use those too. So I'm going to click on one of these hashtags. As it loads, I need to stop sharing my screen and reshare. Let's see this. So this is hashtag crypt the vote. So um, the first one is a post about crypt the vote. There's a Twitter chat voter suppression event that happened on you know September 13th, 2020. So that this event has already passed, but it was something that showed up in my feed. 
Um, the next one is the American Foundation for the Blind shared an interview from Trevor Noah and um, disability rights advocate Judy Human. And so, you know, that might be of interest to you. You may not have found it unless you searched in the hashtag Crip the Vote. And maybe you didn't know about the American Foundation for the Blind. Um, if you hover over it, if you're using a computer and you hover over the title, it will tell you the Michigan of the, or the sorry, the mission of the American Foundation for the Blind is to create words of no limits for people who are blind or visually impaired. We mobilize leaders, advance understanding, and champion impactful policies and practices using research and data. So maybe that's some organization that you want to try to connect with. Just going down, um, different memes people post or different uh, phrases or sayings. But you may find a lot of different information. Um, oh, good. This is Haben um, Yerma. She is the first blind person who graduated from Harvard Law School. And she's an excellent advocate. I highly recommend following her. Um, she was a part of a program called Crip Camp this past summer where she was a speaker and just you know, shared a lot of information. So um, on this post, it says from Haben, what do I call somebody who doesn't have a disability? Not able-bodied. It centers the myths and marginalizes indivisible, sorry, invisible disabilities, such as those of the mind. Not able, it promotes a myth. People with disabilities, people, sorry, disabled people do have abilities. I keep it simple and straight to the point, non-disabled. So she's saying what she calls people who don't necessarily identify with having disabilities, she calls them non-disabled. Language is powerful. The words we use to describe those who do and don't have disabilities impact us all. And then she gives an image description, which is really helpful on Facebook because if somebody's blind and uses a screen reader, if you don't describe the image, they're not gonna see it. And also it helps people who are neurodiverse or who have ADHD, to kind of put the post into context. So she says, I'm wearing a black top in this photo. Behind me are rolling hills. And you can see under that, or you might be able to see under that, she also has hashtag disability, writing, author, crypt the vote. And so if you're thinking, hmm, you know, I like her, maybe I wanna search other things. So I'm gonna click disability and see what pops up when I search this, hash, this hashtag. Um, so this, just want to say, in these results, you will find results that are public posts, and then you might also find results from your friends, the way that Facebook sorts this. So this and is an interesting. Oh, we, go have, ahead. we have a question. Oh, great. Before we move to the next thing. Mm -hmm. um, is, this regarding new is this regarding new coding guidance for H and T codes? And that question is from A. Schumacher. Um, that's a great question. I do not know much about coding, um, so I don't know the answer to that question. I'm sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great question, though. I, I, that is something I want to look more into is coding. Uh, so this image on here is just somebody promoting awareness. So, um, you know, I think it probably is a parent walking with their child who has a disability and they're trying to walk them, you know, down the sidewalk in their neighborhood, but there's a sprinkler and they're trying to draw awareness that, um, you know, this is not accessible. How are you supposed to walk down the sidewalk? Um, when the sprinklers are going, if you, you need the sidewalk, it's not another option, uh, but people may not know this. Uh, so it's, it's important to spread awareness and bring awareness about this. So I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint. All right, so we talked about different hashtags. Have there been any other questions that came up, Tedra? No, not, not yet. Okay, I know that I kind of um, can speak pretty fast sometimes, so if I'm going too fast or if you want me to talk about something that I just touched on, please just let me know and I'm happy to go back. Um, you can also tune into your legislators and other elected officials using Facebook. Um, some of us know coffee hours, but in case you don't know, coffee hours are usually less formal open events where anyone, usually voters, can listen to their elected officials, learn information, ask questions, and give feedback. In non-COVID times, 
Um, usually these would be held in a public place. You would be able to be in person with other voters, with other folks, and the legislator. But because we are being really careful because of COVID-19, um, a lot of legislators have moved to holding their coffee hours online virtually, and some use their Facebook page to do that. It's pretty powerful, right? So some of y'all have Curtis Hertel as your senator. He's a Lansing area um, legislator, and he holds his coffee hours virtually on his Facebook page. So I'm gonna click that. Let me will look at that. Right. So this is uh, Senator Hertel's page. You know, right, right already in the banner, I see a bunch of bunch of uh, folks, probably legislators and staff, holding, you know, um, awesome pride flags. So I already know he's supportive towards the LGBTQ uh, A community. Um, which I think is great. But here in his videos, he has, you know, virtual coffee hour, another virtual coffee hour. He's speaking, you know, at a podium, probably offering comments um, in the Senate. He posts different, um, different updates. But anyway, I wanted to show you, if you go over to his events, though he doesn't have any coming up, he has posted when his coffee hours have been. So, um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna hide this. <clears throat> as, you can, as you can probably see, there's a trend. In February, he was at the Neighborhood Center, and then all the locations drop off because they are just online. He had one uh, recently in July where he held it up outside. Um, but this is, this is great. So you can go on your legislator's page and see if they have any coffee hours coming up in their events. And if they don't, or if you don't see it, you can send a message right to them and say, you know, when is, um, when is your coffee hour coming up? And the way that he has this you know, set up is that you can even ask some auto-generated questions. And we'll look at, look at this for Rashida Tlaib as well, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. Um, you know, tell me more about yourself. How can I learn more about your background? Are you available to chat? Where are you located? So these are some questions that you don't even have to type. You can just click. And bear with me for one sec while I get this link going. All right. Um, Rashida Tlaib from the 13th District of Michigan. She's a congresswoman. She's not a, a state legislator. But I thought this was really interesting. The way that she has her Facebook Messenger chat kind of organized is um, you just click the little bubble. So it's kind of like Senator Hertel's. So if you want to learn about your legislator, but you don't really know where to start, they've kind of made it easier for you. And that, you know, if you want to learn more about Rashida Tlaib, you just hit ask, you know? And when we click ask, oof, when Facebook works better, this usually works better. When you click ask, what normally happens is that messenger pops up and then you can send the message. You can also add more text. So you can say, can you tell me about yourself? And then maybe you wanna say, I'm really interested in how you're supporting people during the pandemic right now. Or, um, you know, what do you think about the Black Lives Matter movement? So you, you can ask them different things that you think. And usually when Facebook is better, you know, all the information is loading in their page but also in their about, right? That's a powerful tool going over to their about. When it loads, there's the link to her web, you know, her house website about her information. Not gonna go over all of it, but this is, this is here. Okay. And bear with me, I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen. All right, so that was a lot of talking. <laughs> and now we have our second question. So I'm curious to find out which do you use more, the Facebook app on your phone or tablet or the Facebook website on your computer? So we have a little owl inside of a tree or, or like a 
piece of wood and they're kind of looking out with one of their eyeballs, their bright orange eyes. So post in the chat, do you use the Facebook app more or do you use the Facebook website in your browser on your computer? I think for me, um, to do work for my organization, I often find myself using my computer just because it's easier to copy and paste and share information. Uh, but for personal use, I think I use my phone more. So what do you use? Uh, we've got, I use my phone app. Someone said I use the computer for work and I use my phone for personal. Let's give it another second, see if more Thanks. answers come Thanks, in. Thanks, everybody. I use both and I go back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it for now. Okay. Thanks, everybody. So we are going to move on to Facebook groups. Um, some of us are part of groups, and I'm going to give us a, you know time to talk about that in just a sec. Um, but groups, if you don't know, are a place to communicate with people about shared interest. So you can join a group or you can create a new group. And in the, oops, something just happened. In the links list, um, there is a link on how you can create a new group. And I, I have to say, um, I've been training on Facebook for a while and they've made it much easier to create groups now and, and pages. Um, it, the, the Facebook program just kind of walks you through it or talks you through it with different prompts on the screen. Um, so I think it's a lot, it's a lot more user friendly than it used to be. So groups can be about anything and they can sometimes be helpful support groups. You can search for what you're interested in and you can find communities to connect with on Facebook. Um, I have to share. So one of my friends is a fantastic cook. And she loves to show pictures of what she makes on Facebook. And she was a part of another cooking group, um, but she felt like it, you know, they weren't very nice to each other or they shared information that wasn't about cooking and it wasn't a good fit for her. So what she did is she made her own cooking group and she only invited her friends to it. Um, and then this way people can, you know, she's in charge of the group. People know it's just about food and recipes. Um, and she doesn't have to worry about people not really being nice to each other because it's her friends. And it, because she's in charge of the group, if somebody is behaving badly, maybe she talks to them or maybe she takes them out of the group. Um, but that's about cooking. So one shared interest is cooking. And we're going to click. Um, whoops. All right. So these are all, this is the Facebook groups. Like if you go to facebook.com and slash groups, these are groups that it will suggest for you based on your profile. So I live in Ypsilanti, Michigan. That's over near Detroit and Ann Arbor. And so it may suggest, you know, maybe I want to join the Ypsilanti town chatter group or the Michigan family voices because I've, I think I have some disability related things uh, that I post. Um, other Ypsilanti things. And then these are groups that my friends are in. So it's looking at my friend list and it's thinking, well, you know, your friend is in this one. So maybe you also want to join. Um, let's see. I, I don't know. Does anybody else shop at Aldi? I love Aldi. I you can't beat the savings. So um, I sometimes will post about Aldi. So it's suggesting that I join this one. Uh, lots of different options. So if you go to facebook.com slash groups, it will just suggest groups that maybe you want to join. You know, a local one, Warriors on Wheels with Jamie Jr., um, this may be a great group to join. So once you click on it, typically you can't see everything. You have to click join the group first. But sometimes the way they set it, you, you know, you can. So let me click join group and we will see what happens. Oh, well, it let me in right away, or, it's, or it says pending. My, um, my uh, what's it called, application or my request is going to be reviewed, and then I'll be notified if I've gotten in or not. Sometimes when you join groups, they will ask you questions like, you know, will you be nice to people in the group? Will you treat others the way you want to be treated? And you kind of have to go down this list and say that you agree. 
Um, this is great because I think it really keeps people from being mean to each other or unnecessarily rude to each other. So when, when you're in a group, you kind of have to abide by the group rules. Um, let's search by what you're interested in. Let me go to this other link that I had up. All right, well, what I wanted to show you is uh, when you search, let's just, let's just say disability. Usually I type better than this, but not today. Um, you can see at the top here in this bar, I have posts, people, photos, videos, marketplace, pages, places, groups. So if I want to search for groups related to disability, I can click on groups and then all these groups are here for me to check out. And it keeps track of the groups that I'm already in. So I'm a part of the Disability News and Conversations group. Um, I'm a part of the Disability Visibility group. There's a Disability Pride Kid Lit group, and that is, that's a cool group. Um, people recommend different books related to Disability Pride. So I'm going to click in that group just to show you. It is a private group, so normally you wouldn't be able to see this content. If you want to join, I would suggest requesting to join. Um, but different uh, things people have posted. This is a book for fading scars, um, my queer disability history, and they posted information on it. Um, this is not just kind of general information, information, uh, sorry, events about talking with authors. There's a interview with Judy Human. We, you know, we saw a post about her and Trevor Noah a little bit ago in the presentation. Um, and I hope Amy Stirk doesn't mind. She's a, she's a friend of mine on Facebook and because we're in this group together, I can see, you know, she has written, wow, Judy, or wow, awesome, Judy is my hero. So different people can share things. And I'm going to go back to the groups list. Disability news and conversations. And I'm just loading this right now. In one year, the average American taxpayer making 50000 a year pays. And it breaks, sorry, it breaks it down on what, what all your money goes to. Um, we can't afford to help the poor. We can't afford corporate welfare. So this is a group. If you feel so inclined this way, you may want to join it. I'm going to go back to the list of groups. This is a disability community um, pride and culture group, but I have not joined this group before. And I wanted to see if it will kind of make me apply, which is good. Oh, it's pending. So I've already requested to join it. Anyway, so these are some groups. I'm going to go back to the presentation and ask a question. All right, so my question is, are you a part of any groups on Facebook? Which ones are you a part of? There are groups for almost every interest and that you may have or topic in your life. And if there isn't one that exists, you can make one. So even with parenting, there are groups for parenting. Um, I'm sure there are groups about, you know, having to teach your kids at home while you're working during the pandemic. Um, I know that there are groups for specific disabilities like cerebral palsy. You can click in the group and you can hear, you can read others' experiences and maybe you feel a little less alone. Um, maybe you share different hacks that work for you. So, you know, if my, if my leg is spasming, this is what I do. Um, and then if you, if your leg also spasms, maybe that information is helpful to you. Then we're getting some responses in. Okay. Um, someone's in the Milford Matters group. Someone else is in their child school group. They're in a recipe group and groups with families. I am also in the food group that you're in. <laughs> in the the recipe group that you're in um, I'm going to give a second to see if anyone on Facebook responds because we had a couple of Facebook responses for the last one but we didn't um, they came in a little bit later 
Okay. So we'll give Tracy a second to see, to include anyone's Facebook responses. I think something powerful about Facebook groups is that uh, you just, you realize I am not alone in this need or, um, you know, uh, let me think. So just, just, you know, I'm going to be really open and honest. I am a person of size and navigating the world is not so easy for me. A lot of people are mean or things are a little too small for me. So I joined a group and it is just people my size and we share different hacks that we've learned in life. Um, you know, there are certain chairs out on patios right now that are tiny and they really hurt if you try to sit in them, if you have a larger body. And sometimes people will just post, oh, I hate these chairs. They'll take a picture of it. And then, you know, 50 people will comment, they are the worst, but you feel less alone. You feel more connected to people and you kind of feel the same common struggles as people. Jen, we have a question, which I think you'll probably be getting to in just a second, which is how do I create groups on Facebook? Oh, great. So that's a great question. If you look, I think if Tedra can post the links list, there in the links list, it says how to create a group. And I will, I'll click this link right now and show you. And let me just do my stop sharing, share a different screen thing real quick. All right, so this is the Facebook support uh, screen, and how do I create a group? You can hit the plus sign on the top right of Facebook and select a group. You enter your group name, choose the privacy option if you want your group to be public or private, um, and then you click create. You can also upload a cover folder. So let's see. Where would the plus sign be? Top right of Facebook. And I do think, um, unfortunately, things change all the time. And if you can't find something in the spot that you were looking for it, it will, um, sometimes you have to search a little bit. If I manage my groups, what does that do? Oh, okay. So if I go into this little arrow up here, this is kind of the control bar. It has my profile picture, home, you know, create. Oh. Well, if you just go to create, you can click group. And then we can name our group. We can add a couple of friends so that they're, you know, you want to add people if you know that they want to join. You don't really want to add people because it can kind of be spammy if you haven't already talked to them. Uh, and then you choose your privacy. So is the group public or is it private? And then you end up creating it. So like really it's, it's gotten a lot, um, a lot more intuitive Facebook has over the years. So you just go to your main Facebook um, page and or sorry, not page, you're kind of your feed. This is your home base and then click create. Okay. Good question. And I'm glad, very glad you asked it. Okay. Thank you for sharing which groups you're in. Did anybody share any new ones, Tundra? Did I miss it? Uh, nope. Okay. We're current. Cool. Thank you. So I wanted to talk a little bit about Facebook safety features. There are so many things that you can do on Facebook to keep yourself safe. So in the links list, I've included a separate link on all of those features that you can look and see what ones that you want to put in place for yourself. I tried to just include in this list the ones that I think are really, really important. Um, so kind of the highlights. So basic rule of thumb, you don't really want to share your password with anybody. So, you know, you don't really want to share it with your friends. Um, you know, if you get in a fight, maybe somebody, you know, has revenge on you and they log into your Facebook and they maybe post some terrible things or it's just, it's not a good situation to share your, your password. Um, I also recommend don't accept friend requests or messages from people that you don't know. Um, I think in recent times, there are a lot of schemes online where people are trying to get money or trying to manipulate people online. And so as a good rule of thumb to stay away from this, just don't accept friend requests or messages from people that you don't know. 
Um, and it's best not to send money to people on Facebook. Again, you know, somebody may say I'm a friend of a friend of a friend and I, my car broke down and I need money and it could be somebody trying to take advantage of you. Um, it's just better not to do that. So if you're a gamer on Facebook, because Facebook has a lot of cool games, if you put your credit card in, you can buy more credits for these cool Facebook games. But there have been so many reports over the years that these games are predatory and they really take advantage of people. So, um, you know, you could be spending hundreds or thousands of dollars on these little Facebook games before you even realize it because you're just, you know, into the game and you're wanting to get to the next level. So it's, I would just say, take away that temptation and don't even put your credit card in the system so that it doesn't, it isn't able to access your financials. Um, and then post to your friends rather than making public posts. You're less likely to be trolled or messed with online. So in the next slide, we'll talk about trolling, but I wanted to show this real quick. So when you post, you can control who sees what you post. When I post something on Facebook, how do I choose who can see it? So if I click this, when you create a post, you can choose to make it public or make it friends or, you know, whoever you want. Um, so for example, I'm going to go to my Facebook, I mean Facebook, um, uh, sorry, in my, I should just read, I should read the text on the screen. My banner is if an event is, uh, online event is public, it needs to be captioned. Um, that's a passion of mine to have captions. Um, I, I'm hard of hearing and I really benefit from having captions. So um, when I make my post here online, I have an option to click friends, public, you know, or I can choose only me. I can choose my friends. Anyway, so there's different, different options when you go in there. You can also do that for your story too, if you post story uh, stories on Facebook. I just that was just one thing I wanted to show because it can get a little confusing on how to do that. All right. So yeah, post to your friends. Oops. Well, oh, bear with me. I don't know why this isn't advancing. So dealing with trolls and online bullies and on the screen is a little treasure troll like from the 90s or early 2000s that has great green hair. So trolls are really online bullies. That's that's what we call them. That's kind of their their title. Um, if somebody's being really mean to you, you call it trolling. The trolls are people who get others angry online and in a mean way. It's not necessarily to get people angry to promote, you know, positive social change. It's to get people angry to make them upset. So they often say very mean and offensive things. They live to make people upset and angry. Um, my response is that you don't owe anybody a response. If somebody is being mean or you feel like they're being unfair to you, um, if you're, if you respond, they'll come back with even worse comments. So don't let somebody egg you on. Don't let somebody um, try. There's a lot of euphemisms I could use. I'm trying not to, but don't let somebody make you feel bad. Um, you, you may put a great response with tons of facts and you, you may state your argument wonderfully and then they'll come back and say some really mean stuff to you. So you don't owe anybody a response. If somebody is really harassing you, or you don't want to see them anymore in your profile or your feed, you can block people who are harming you. Um, and I do want to say, though people have been your Facebook friends for a long time, if you feel like they are harming you, it is okay to unfriend them. Like you, hopefully you're using Facebook as something that you enjoy um, to connect with people. And if you're going in and getting harmed all the time by friends of yours on Facebook, it really is okay to unfriend people. Um, trolls and really people who always want to be right. You know, I think we have, I think some of us in our lives have those people who always want to be right. 
at the cost of anything. Um, but anyway, those people can really impact your mental health. So I just say, take care of yourself. You are important and you don't deserve to be harmed. Jen, we have a question. Hold okay. on. It is from Brett. Brett, you can unmute yourself and um, ask your question. Hi, Jen. Thank you very much for this very informative uh, presentation. A uh, quick question. How do you bl um, block something you've been tagged in that you may not agree with? Okay, so in, in the settings, like there's little hidden settings. If you get tagged in something and you don't want to be tagged in it, let me see. Uh, I'm going to try to show you. I was tagged in something recently. If I go to my, I don't know what's on my profile. I don't think I post anything inappropriate, but I'm just letting you know. Um, Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> I post a lot of advocacy things. So something may offend you, but it is usually an advocacy thing. Um, something I was tagged in recently. Darn. There's a way to untag yourself. Shoot. You know what we're going to do? How I, can you see my screen right now? No, we can just still see you. I sorry about that. I forgot to share it. I think when in doubt, searching is really good. So I just wrote in here how do I untag my how do I remove a tag for a photo or a post that I'm tagged in? So if I open this. Facebook, again, will give me directions from their help center. So you go to the post. Usually there are three little dots in the top right of the post, and you can click remove tag. So that's from a post. If you're tagged in a photo, same thing, three little dots, remove tag, OK. Um, when you remove a tag, keep in mind the tag will no longer appear on the sorry, post or photo, but that photo is still out there. Um, you can report the post, the post to Facebook, and you can also ask the person who posted it to take it down. Did that answer your question, Brett, or is there, we can search more together? No, that answered my question. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. I think sometimes maybe you're going through, um, people will tag you in their Facebook posts because they want to make sure as many people sees it, see it, right? And if they tag 50 people in their post, everyone will get a notification, hey, so-and-so has, has, uh, has tagged you in their photo. Um, I don't recommend doing that. I feel like that's spamming people and we don't want that, right? It's kind of another way of low-key trolling someone. So if you do that, I would just suggest kind of looking at that and thinking about it. Um, I'm going to share my screen again. All right. The next slide is a question slide. Okay. So I wanted to ask, those are kind of my tips for dealing with trolls and staying safe. But I don't, I know I don't know everything. So I'm wondering, do you have tips for staying safe while using Facebook? Can you write them in the chat? Um, and also, of, do you like to use the hand raise function and provide your tips um, aloud? Then just, you can do that as well. I was doing a presentation for the Leadership Development Opportunities um, DD Council grant a couple of weeks ago on video blogging. And we talked about trolling and, uh, you know, we kind of got to this discussion and somebody said, I've had a lot of trolls and I try to reason with them, but they just are so mean and it makes me feel so sad and it makes me not want to video blog anymore. So we talked about the importance of, of blocking people and keeping yourself safe. Um, and I really think that's important. You don't have to be like, there's no reason in the world that you have to deal with that. Um, or you have to keep dealing with it. You should be able to protect yourself. Um, Jen, this is Tracy. Can I also um, just make a comment? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so in regards to um, people tagging you in photos, um, you can also go to your privacy settings 
and turn on the feature for review so that um, you're able to review any posts or photos that you're tagged in before they, before they appear on your timeline, um, which is also a nice feature. Oh, that's great, Tracy. That way it doesn't automatically pop up on your timeline. You're able to approve it before it goes on your timeline. Jen, we also have a couple, um, we do have a couple responses in the chat and people, someone just says, don't trust people or strangers that you don't know. Don't, you know, like don't trust information from people that you don't know. And someone else says, I make sure my privacy settings are set to what my preferences are. For the tagging question, you can also set your privacy settings to view posts that you're tagged in before they're posted. Oh, so what Tracy just shared with us. That's great. Um, um, one of my, one of the things that I do is mm -hmm. make sure that I'm verifying the source of anything that I'm, I'm looking at. And I don't share stuff that I don't trust. Mm -hmm. That's a good tip. That, that's it for the comments for now. Um, kind of going off of what you said, Tedra, about you don't share something that you don't trust. Like maybe you look up the source of where it's coming from and we'll talk about that in the next couple of slides. Um, sometimes, you know, maybe you see something that you feel very passionate about and you share it because you think this is really important to me. And then you learn later it's not accurate. I mean, that happens sometimes and it's okay to update the post and say, this isn't accurate. Um, I, I really cared about this, but uh, this isn't accurate. So just a heads up or you can put a comment in there. Um, I think it's helpful to leave stuff up and just edit the post to say, whoops, you know, the, the information is still important, but this isn't accurate. Maybe here's a better news source. But if you do that, I, you know, it, it happens sometimes, um, even, even when you try not to do it. So don't, uh, don't beat yourself up about it. So we were talking about news sources. So you should try to learn about where your news is coming from on Facebook. There is a really important article about tips to spot false, whoa, what just happened? Tips to spot false news on Facebook. And we'll go over that. Um, there is also a show more information about this link feature that is on Facebook. It's built into posts. And I thought we could try it out a little bit on the Michigan DD Council's Facebook page. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to do the tips to spot goodness, fake, uh, false, false news. So Facebook very smartly is not calling it a, sorry about this. It's not calling it fake news. They're saying false news because I think they know that, you know, fake news is a very charged uh, term right now. And so false news is the way that they are talking about it. So again, this is in their help center, which I go, I go to their help center a lot if I am trying to find out information. I'm sure, just real quick, I'm sure if you wrote tagging in here, like we've been talking about, ah, here we go. How do I review tags that people add to my Facebook posts before they appear? How do I tag people? So there's lots of information if you just can go to facebook.com slash help. That will take you to the help center. In years past, Facebook did not have a very good help center, but they, I feel like they do, do now. All right, so Facebook is apparently uh, re committed to reducing the spread of false news on Facebook. They remove fake accounts. Um, they, they investigate. But they are doing some suggestions on what to look out for. So being skeptical or being curious about headlines. Uh, oftentimes, false news stories will have catchy headlines and all caps with exclamation points. So that's something to kind of look out for. If they sound unbelievable, they may be unbelievable. They probably are. But you know, I, there are sometimes like the California wildfires, 
you know, California is burning might be the title of the news story. And that may be really alarming, but that's pretty true right now with all the wildfires and Oregon is burning. So um, you kind of have to take all the information. Uh, look closely at the link. A phony or a lookalike link might be a sign of false news. We'll talk about that. Um, investigate the source. So, you know, Tedra was saying before I post anything, I kind of check it out. So she looks at their about section of maybe, sorry, Tedra, I don't know if you do this or not, but maybe you look at the about section of a page before you share the information and we'll, we'll show how to do that. Unusual formatting. So false news sites might have misspellings or awkward layouts. Um, consider the photos. They may have some bizarre photos. Uh, inspect the dates. We talked about some news stories are being, you know, out of date and maybe 10 years old. Um, but people are posting those and it can be inaccurate. Check the evidence. Look at other reports. So if you see one unbelievable kind of news story, search that in a Google search and see what other articles come up. Do you find anything else that talks about that subject? If not, you know, maybe that's just kind of a weird article because usually if one organization's reporting on it, others are reporting on it as well. Um, and is the story a joke? Sometimes headlines can be uh, just kind of clickbait. There's a term called clickbait. So they just, websites want you to click on information if it's valuable or not, they just want you to click on it. So they're going to give it whatever kind of headline they can give it. And knowing that some stories are intentionally false. So not every story out there is very accurate. And knowing that is can be helpful. Okay, so we were going to go to Michigan Development and Disabilities Council. So as this loads, thanks for being patient. Um, we talked about the little eye that pops up when articles are posted. So, ah, so here we go. <clears throat> this is the advertisement, a post for today's session on social media for Facebook. And there's a little eye. So these appeared a couple of years ago. And this is the show more information about this link. So when I click it, it tells me that this link is from Michigan Developmental Disabilities Institute. So it also shows what website is affiliated or related to that page. And it was created more than 10 years ago. So I feel pretty confident about this because I know Michigan Developmental Disabilities Institute is, you know, a good organization or a safe organization. They usually share very accurate information. But if I wanted to know more about them, um, maybe I wasn't so familiar, I could open up their page and here's where I can see their posts. You know, does this, does this feel pretty real? And then I can go to their about section where I can see what their mission is. And I see that they're, they have a messenger and a phone and the website. Here we go. So I can go even on their website to see, oh, there's Andre Robinson right on the front page using a computer. Awesome. So this is a part of wayne.edu. I know it's a part of Wayne State College. So I, you know, I feel it's an education site. I feel pretty confident with it. Um, but what about pages, what about posts that are a little bit more fuzzy? Let's find some of those. Okay, so here's one. Equity includes opportunities for Michiganders with disabilities. So I'm going to click this link in the little information I, and it says that this is from the Detroit Free Press. Oh, the Detroit Free Press. That's a newspaper that I grew up reading. So I feel pretty comfortable. That's okay. I can find out more information. And it also shows other uh, from this website, other posts. Hopefully this is making sense. Um, here's one from Disability Scoop. Pandemic job uh, losses pile up for those with IDD or intellectual and developmental disabilities. Maybe I haven't heard of Disability Scoop before and I'm just not sure. So I'm going to click the little I. And I can see, okay, there's a website 
more than 10 years ago. Here are the other articles that they're posting. Oh, the Target Disney expanded costume options for those with special needs. Pretty cool. Um, but again, I can click on their Facebook page. And I can look in their about section. And then I can find more information and even click their website so that I can learn more about them and see if I feel like this is a good news source or if this is a not, not a helpful news source. I don't really want to show you a trolley one. I, I think um, Tedra and I were talking about this. I think the people have different sources for news. Um, and in 2020, somebody may believe that a news source is very reputable to them. Um, and it's, it's kind of a personal choice. I really go with the facts and I go with science. Other people believe different things. Um, there's another link, the AUCD Voter Rights and Accessibility. So I'm just going to, this is the last one, I'm going to click this little I and see what information I find out. Okay, it shows more information. It shows that it's in the United States. Sometimes it's helpful to know where organizations are based because um, I think you've heard of election meddling in the past. There was an investigation by Congress. Um, organizations from other countries do try to influence social media in the United States. And so another bit of information is to kind of take into account, you know, where is this organization located? Um, anyway, I hope that's helpful. Does anybody have any questions about the information I or finding your accurate news sources? Uh, as I scan the crowd, there are no hands raised or no questions in the chat, Jen. Okay. Um, Tedra, did you want to talk about how you try to find out if the information is correct or accurate for the articles that you share? I'm putting you on the spot so you can say no also. So I really only, um, well, one, I don't really share a lot of stuff because I find that sharing a lot of, especially news information, brings conversation that I'm really just not interested in having most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, but the, for the stories that I read, it has to be from a reputable news source. Um, and that doesn't mean news that sways one way or the other, but if it's something that I've never heard of, then generally I, you know, just click out of it. Mm -hmm. I do click the I to check the info. And if it's, if, if, the, if it originated somewhere that I've never heard of, and I say that because I read a lot of news. And so even some of the, you know, more recent kind of um, news services or, you know, more popular blog sites or that, you know, if I've never heard of them, I just click out of it. I don't bother even, even reading it. So for me, it's really more about the, the reputation and it being a reputable news sort. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I did, I forgot to mention this though. I showed how to use the eye on my web browser. And the I, the I information I is also available in your app. So if you if you use Facebook more on your phone, like we talked about earlier in the presentation, you can also click that little I in your app, and it'll show you the same information. Um, that kind of takes us to the end. So I have a quick, or it's a short, three question evaluation. Um, I think that link is going to be put in the chat. If you could fill it out, that would be really helpful to me. Um, it talks about the social media series, so it would be helpful for future ones. And then if you have questions or, you know, if even if you if, if you think I might not know the answer, but I can search with you, please, please reach out to me and I'm happy to try to help. My email address is jen at mymdrc.org. That's jen, J-E-N, at mymdrc.org. And then um, on October, 22nd, we are going to be back and talking about YouTube 
And I think I'm going to have other presenters with me um, talking about how they use YouTube and how to use it for advocacy. Jen, you've got a chat, a comment in the chat saying thank you. And this information is very important to all of us who use Facebook. Oh, wonderful. I'm, I'm glad it's helpful. That, that's great. Thank you for the nice feedback. So thank you so much for joining us. We felt like this social media series was really important to give people information, especially now when we can't gather together and exchange information like we typically do or like we're used to doing. And so um, we want to continue to bring this information to people and help, um, you know, really do a deeper dive into helping you understand uh, these social media outlets and how to use them. Um, the good thing about, especially for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, when we're talking about YouTube and, and Instagram, they're not very text-based. Those are much more, they're video-based and photograph-based. And so um, they've been, it's been proven that they are really good outlets for people um, to use and, and don't have to type a lot to get their point across. So we hope that you join us. That's on October 22nd, but our, our webinar series continues next Thursday um, at 11 a.m. So be on the lookout for next week's announcement. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, have a great day. Thank you, thank you to Jen for um, the really informative information. I learned some stuff that I did not know, but I'm a novice Facebook user, so. Um, that's not, it's not hard to do. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye. Everyone.